Hi friends, so today is another little car day and today I'm going to talk about one that's quite common as a species in general and this one is, um, so this is actually in the subfamily Lolcarinae and this is Farlawella, also known as the twig catfishes. If I zoom in on him, we'll be able to see a bit more. So it's rather slow zoom. So okay, so this is Father Weller, and you can see why he's named, uh, why were they given the common name to a catfish. So this is potentially uh, Father Weller Vitita, but I'm not entirely sure. I need to spend a bit of work on it. So this, um, so Father Weller was actually named after a Dr. W. G. Far follower. Uh, from um, Harvard University, so it's not actually named. It's after named after someone rather than being. So it's, it's focusing on my neck more than on the fish. Let's see if I can zoom in a little more. See the head detail. Yeah, it's just focusing on me. That's a bit better. But so. Yeah, so you can see the fish there. So these uh, fish, the Laurel Card, they all originate from South America and there aren't any, there, um, I don't think there's any invasive populations of um, any Laurel Card, actually, elsewhere. So this species is probably, it's going to be a quick video because I can only talk so much about Laurel Card. And this species originates from areas high in botanicals, and botanicals meaning plant matter. Um, and there's no surprise that they're actually found around twigs, branches and other vegetation. But not the plants that we see in the aquarium trade. These would be plants where their roots or trunks would be in the water, not the actual plants. Most of the aquarium plants aren't natural. They will only be found in... Um, so sort of they'd be mostly repairing vegetation out of the water, maybe submerged for short periods of time but not for long periods. So these are found around dead plants, dead plant matter. And the beautiful shape of this fish, if I zoom out while it, if I zoom out while it focuses too much on my hair, um, so this the shape of the fish, which is really difficult to kind of hold in a way that you can see, this is just to hide its cryptic coloration and sort of cryptic mar um, shape just to hide amongst the branches, amongst the vegetation, so it doesn't get eaten easily, and well, generally hiding from predators. And often this elongate shape, it looks a lot more like a stick, a twig, and they tend to lie straight, and when they move, they tend to keep straight. And you've also got this beautiful ex nose, I think it's called a rostrum. I don't think, unlike in, say, sturgeon, sturgeon, I get this. this focus. No, maybe not. But um, yeah, sorry. Um, but this I don't think has any sensory uh, uses. Although catfish are covered in taste buds, so it probably will extend the ability that fish will, the fish will be able to um, detect food. So the coloration is brown like a twig, it kind of breaks up the appearance, it's usually dark around there, around the lateral line area, and then you can see it follows on there. These fish are absolutely brilliant at well hiding, a lot of people won't notice them in stores, and they're rather, I find, hardy once acclimatised. So these fish are probably tolerant to a wide range of parameters as a genus. They're found throughout South America, but generally I would say around sort of temperatures of 24 to 28 degrees, but research to individual species. They aren't the easiest to identify and they're usually imported as the wrong or random species. Um, they're not great swimmers, as I said, and they tend to, well, they tend to shuffle along the um, moving sort of straight Focus is absolutely a nightmare. They tend to sort of shuffle along, or they tend to um, sort of move using their mouth rather than other 
sport body parts. They don't really swim, they're not the greatest swimmers anyway. You can see they've got very small fins. Their tail fin is, um, oh, tail fin, caudal fin, usually it has long extensions, and these got damaged, I think, in the alcohol, but they usually have long extensions to this, and it kind of probably merges their appearance a lot more with the wild. They are like all orcas, they have dermal plates, these are not scales. These are made of bone and this allows the fish to have added protection and also it gives it some rigidity. It's sort of a better camouflage, I'd say, um, in the environment that they live. Because they do look a lot more like a stick with that rigidity to it. So their diet. These are specialist uh, periplankton or all fruit eaters and they are really herbivorous. If I zoom in, Okay, so you can see the mouth here, it's dorsal, um, it's ventrally placed, it is a, you could say inferior mouth, oh, there we go, you could say it's an inferior mouth, and it's got very fine teeth for scraping off the algae off the bottom of a, well plants really, off the wood, off um, the twigs and stuff like that, the, it's decaying, so there's a lot of um, bacteria building up there, and also say um, algae if there's light available and a whole load of different orfwitch available to them. So this species is feeding on that, they are herbivores in the broad sense but there's likely they will be eating a level of I guess sponges. So that is an animal and it, as is bryzoa but generally I'll say herbivore just by the sort of mode of eating that they're doing. And the proportions of each will depend on the habitat. Barlowella is a member of the order Siluriform, so like all Lorcardae, they are catfishes. They're in the family Lorcardae, which is Plecos, that's so you've got Hypencistrus, you've got Ancistrus, you've got Pseudocanthicus, you've got Canthicus, so they're all related to those. But they are in the subfamily Lorcarnae, and this is shared with Lorcarichthys, Rhinolacorus, Dorosomichthys, and all of these tend to be very elongate like this with a variety of different body shapes. So I make mean, these has a long, a higher dorsal fin. You get substrate feeders which tend to be a lot more flatter, um, still elongate, and that would be um, oh my god, I shouldn't know. Oh, uh, you've got Planet Locoria and Pseudohemiodon, and these will sort of remain in the substrate. I think there's Hemidonic these, Spencers, which is another substrate dwelling in there, more insectivores rather than these guys which are herbivores. Um, so there's a whole range of different ones and you just only got to look at their body shape. They are fascinating, absolutely beautiful fish. And I think they really need a lot more appreciation than they get most of the time. Anyway, thank you for watching. Only a quick video, but... Anyway, thank you.